Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Faith Ministries, where we walk by faith and not by sight. It is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023, and I'd like to welcome you to our final installation of the Life is Spiritual series. So this is episode six. Today, we are going to be praying for marriage restoration. So if you um, are in a marriage that has gone wrong and you are desperately seeking for a restoration of your marriage, this video is for you. If you know someone who is in that same boat, please don't hesitate to share this video with them so that they can pray along and trust the Lord and um, see the hand of the Lord move. For we know that marriage is God's will and the enemy is attacking marriage. So we discussed this in uh, the Life is Spiritual series, episode five, actually. So if you haven't watched that, please make sure to go watch that video to see some of the strategies that the enemy has been using in these last days to desecrate marriage and to pretty much eliminate it. Now, the Bible says that a man is to leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. But sometimes the process of cleaving goes wrong and for very many reasons. Um, they are the most extreme reasons where we have people in abusive relationships. And this is not the video for that. This is curtailed more towards things that can be worked out in a marriage that people feel like they don't want to be able to work on anymore so if you are in an abusive marriage where your life is at risk or your life is in danger it is not the will of god for you to be in such a situation where you could potentially lose your life okay so this video is not for you you need safety you need security and you need help and i pray that the lord will send assistance and that you can find resources where near where you live and the support of family to help get you out of that situation. Now, if you're just like most people, every marriage has its ups and downs. But these days we're in, a, in life, we are in situations where everything is so microwavable. We want quick solutions. We don't want to experience, you know, the downs of life. We have been grossly deceived by Hollywood to believe that marriage should be a bed of roses. And so when things go south even just for a little bit or when people are going through the valleys or the desert in their marriage some people feel it is the right time to leave their partner for greener pastures but this whole concept of breaking covenant this way is absolutely wrong and unacceptable the bible tells us actually in malachi chapter 2 verse 14 that um, actually, verse 13 through 14, the, the Lord is saying that the people in Israel were complaining and saying, Lord, we've offered all these sacrifices to you and you're not listening to us. You're not answering our prayers. And the Lord says, why? Because you have forsaken the wife of your youth. So if you're a man and you're listening to this and you are forsaking the wife of your youth, the wife who met you when you had nothing, and built the empire with you and got you to a place where you feel that you are successful and because you're successful now you have these young fresh-faced girls running around after you chasing your money stroking your ego making you feel like you're a king and making you look at your wife and despise your wife who is the mother of your children also possibly and to think that she is no longer useful to you this is for you do not abandon or forsake the wife of your youth because your wife right now who you despise once was fresh-faced, once was young and beautiful. But she had more sense than these little foolish girls who are running around after you today because she was with you when you had nothing. And she inspired you and helped you build. She was your biggest fan when there was no one around to lift you up. She was the one that was there for you. And so now that you have a few coins in your pocket, you think you can discard your wife for a fresh face or for a young woman at the office. The Lord rebuke you and the judgment of God will rain upon you. As Malachi 2.14 says, you will pray and your prayers will not be answered for this thing that you are going to do. So if you are in this situation as a man and having lustful thoughts or contemplating kicking it with a woman at the office or other people out there because somehow, somewhere, your wife of 10, 15, 20 years, eight years is not cutting it anymore, then 
I strongly consider that you turn back to the Lord because the path that you're going down will lead you to destruction. These are strange women that you are following and they will lead you down to the pit and cause you sorrow and sickness and death to your bones. And so, if you are smart, please listen to the words that I'm speaking to you right now. It will not be worth it for you to leave your wife and your children for someone else out there. Because at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what kind of a woman are you getting with who is comfortable dating a man who is married, who is comfortable ruining another person's marriage? Now, if you're a woman and you're listening to this, please hear me properly. Hear me loud and, cl and clear. You have these friends who keep telling you, girl, you can do better. You can do better than the men that you got. And these women are single. So you've got your single friends in your ear telling you that you can do better than the husband that you have. So the option of finding better men out there is only for what? Married women who can leave their husbands to find better men out there. But they who are single are not able to find from that pool of better men to end up with. Don't be foolish. You should not be taking advice from single people as a married woman because they don't have that experience of having been married, of knowing the ins and outs, the ups and downs of marriage. And these single friends that you have who are always in your ear telling you to leave your man and your man is a good man. He works hard. He may not make as much money as you do, but he is hardworking and he's committed to the family. But because he doesn't possess the trappings of the life, you think you can do better out there and get a man who will surprise you with all these things, you know, the world cares about roses and he'll take me on trips and he'll fly me around the world and he does this and that. Let me tell you something. If you live a solid man who is faithful to you, who works hard to put food on the table, who is committed to being a family man, for that kind of guy that you think is going to give you the life or the jet set lifestyle, you will be very disappointed in the end. Because the qualities that make marriage last through the ups and the downs is not a man's ability to be romantic, to buy you roses and buy you cars and take you across the world. But it rests solely upon his ability to provide for his family, to protect his family, to be the high priest of his family and to be committed to the marriage no matter what. And so the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 14, actually, that a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish one tears down her house with her own hands. Do not be a foolish woman. Understand that everything in life, including marriage, has seasons. You've got seasons of growth and thriving. You've got seasons of dry spells where now you have to rely on the good times and the green times and the times of growth and thriving. You draw from the strength of that to maintain the stamina in your marriage. So do not tear down your marriage with your own hands by going out there and talking about your husband to other people, by putting him down in front of other people or behind his back. By looking at other men and coming home and saying, oh, so-and-so's husband does this and that and that. Other men out there do, well, you're not married to other men. You're married to the man that you picked. And so you find that in these types of marriages where now we have things that are going wrong that we really need to ask the Lord to restore today. A man wakes up one morning and his wife is no longer in love with him, allegedly. I don't love you anymore. He begs, he kneels down, he cries, he pleads. Let's work things out. I'm sorry. He doesn't even know why he's apologizing, but he's apologizing because she has decided she wants to leave the marriage. And she's like, no, I just need time. I don't know. I don't want to be in this marriage. I'm not in love with you anymore. One thing that you forget and I'm sorry I have to be really hard about this today, but this is the rebuke that is in my heart. And sometimes somebody has to say the truth. 
because we live in a world today where everyone is so politically correct. Everyone wants to be sweet and nice and tell you sugary things, but those sugary things do not help you. I am known to be a person who is very outspoken and who speaks the truth. I, I, the word politically correct does not exist in my vocabulary because I will tell you the truth as I see it. And I would rather slap you with the truth than kiss you with a lie because the truth will make you free. And so as a woman, and I'm speaking to women now, if you find yourself in a situation where I'm just not really feeling my husband anymore. I think I want to leave. I have better options out there. There are no better options out there. You think they are, but they're not. Because if they were, we wouldn't have such a high rate of women, single, looking for good men, but finding that the pickings are very slim. And so what you fail to understand in thinking that, oh, I'm going to just, my husband's not doing it for me anymore is that you have not inspired the man. You have not found the secret that unlocks that key that unlocks the man's heart to make him rise to his highest potential. You were supposed to be his supporter. You were supposed to be his helper. You did not find the keys to inspire the man to awaken the giant within. And so he kind of just remained the way he was. In fact, maybe he was fighting against all odds because who you are as a human being does not inspire anything other than just trying to survive every day. And so I'm telling you, if you have a solid man who hasn't done anything wrong to you, but you think you can do better because he's just not motivated, he's just not driven, you'll go out there, leave the husband of your youth, you'll go out there and find that dating is not what it used to be. Meanwhile, he will find someone else who appreciates him and sees the potential that he has. Someone who's willing to build a future with him. And when that happens and he marries that woman and she unlocks the keys, the four critical keys that can unlock a man's heart, once she unlocks those keys, and the man begins to thrive. Suddenly, he is just going above and beyond. You're seeing him rise up the ranks. The man that you thought was a black ship, the man that you thought was a deadbeat, suddenly you turn around and realize this man is going places. This is the man that I wanted to have all along. But guess what? You weren't willing to invest in him. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, and in every other way. You were quick to write him off to go get the ready-made man without understanding that all those ready-made men also went through a phase where they were nothing and they had to build themselves up. Now the man that you left is married to somebody else. He's thriving. He's happy. He's all the things you wanted him to be and then more, and now you want him back. That's foolishness. Save yourself the drama of this foolishness. Stay where you are. Work on your marriage. Go through the rough patches. Be wise. If you lack wisdom, ask the Lord for wisdom. And grow old. Commit to growing old with your husband. Figure out what those keys are that can unlock his heart to open up, for, to make him realize his potential and be the one that's by his side as he does that. So I'm giving men and women equal treatment today. So if you're listening to this and that's your line of thinking right now, I am telling you, you will be making a very big mistake to leave your husband because you want a guy who's ready-made. What you need to do is reflect and see what you need to do, what you have failed to do in your marriage. Because the other woman, the reason your ex-husband is thriving in his new marriage is because the other woman was able to unlock the keys. She, she was able to unlock his potential and make him thrive. So evaluate yourself if you find yourself in these situations. And now to every woman who's brokenhearted because their husband is leaving or has left for another woman or man. Well, if it's man, forget about him because he's on the down low. 
But if you are grieving and you love your husband and things aren't going great, he's a different person from what you knew. And you're trusting God to restore your marriage. Please understand that the Lord has a heart for you. Because he says in his word time and again, a man should not abandon his wife. If you're a man and you have been abandoned by your wife right now, and you're seeking restoration, the Lord has a heart for you as well. Because God understands covenant and marriage was established to be a covenant that he takes very seriously. Sometimes the enemy infiltrates marriage and causes a lot of delusions where you hear things, you're very suspicious of your spouse, you think they're cheating on you, you think this and that and they're not doing that at all. We have anti-marriage spirits that are infiltrating marriage every day, whispering negative thoughts into your mind and you actually accidentally think that those thoughts are your thoughts, but they are the thoughts that are coming from the enemy against your marriage. So where you feel like you are in a relationship and in a marriage, where suddenly things started to go wrong and there's a lot of miscommunication, misunderstanding, and the spirit of offense is high, where something little just causes a big blow up and people are not happy and people are just getting upset over very little things, you have to understand that there is a war against your marriage. And it takes only one person waking up to that realization for that spell to be broken. So today... We're going to trust the Lord and ask the Lord to restore our marriage, marriages. Okay, so I am going to pray with you. And to those of you, if what I've said in the first 15 minutes of this video resonated with you and you see yourself in any one of these scenarios, pause before you consider getting a divorce. Seek the Lord instead and ask him to begin to restore your mind, to renew your mind, and to restore your marriage also. Because there is nothing fancy out there. The grass is not greener on the other side. And if it does look green, it's because somebody is watering that grass. So why not water your own grass, which is your marriage? And so let's pray right now, a really short prayer, and ask the Lord to restore your marriage whichever camp you might be. Because the Lord God honors covenant and it is in his will for you to stay married if your life is not in danger, if you're not experiencing psychological, emotional abuse and potentially a threat to your own life. And let's pray. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus today. We want to just worship you and acknowledge your kingship and lordship over our lives. Lord, we pray right now, O oh Lord, for you know the state of our marriage. Things have not been going great in the last few decades and things have reached ahead where my husband wants to move out, where my wife wants to move out, where we have been quarreling more than usual where the kids are suffering and bearing the brunt of the conflict that has been in this marriage. Lord, I come to you because you are a covenant God and you created marriage to be a covenant. I still love my husband. I still love my wife. I'm looking to you for restoration of marriage today. Please restore our marriage, O oh Lord. Whatever third party has infiltrated this marriage, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that that third party and that stumbling block to the marriage be completely removed in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. I pray right now, O oh Lord, that you will open up our eyes, open up our hearts, Lord. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to discern what is the root cause of the oppression in our marriage, O oh Lord. Help us to understand what we need to do. Give us the wisdom and the tools that we need to begin to repair our marriage. Lord, where our husbands or our wives have gone wayward and have been wayward in their actions and have caused us pain and hurt, Lord, today we choose to forgive them for all the things that they have done. 
we let go today of every ounce of anger, every ounce of bitterness, every ounce of resentment, oh Lord. We release it to you in the name of Jesus. And we choose to forgive our husband. We choose to forgive our wife. Father, where we have wronged our spouses, we pray, Lord, that even as that you give us a spirit of humility to go to them and to repent and to ask for forgiveness. And Lord, even as we approach our spouses for forgiveness, we pray that you will be able to soften their hearts towards us, that they might be able to receive our apology, that they might be able to receive, Lord, our humble request for forgiveness. Lord, you joined our hearts together as one. If this spouse is the spouse that you ordained for us from the foundations of the earth, Lord, then your word says in Matthew 16, 9, that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And so we beseech you today and ask that you will restore this marriage to what it once was and even better. Lord, we come against right now. We speak directly to the spirits of anti-marriage, to the spirits of divorce and separation. Right now, in the authority that has been given to us, by our Lord Jesus Christ, we command that you lose your grip over our marriage in the name of Jesus. We command that every spirit of divorce, every spirit of anti-marriage and separation be destroyed and removed from this marriage permanently in Jesus' name. We command every spirit from the marine kingdom, every spirit of incubus, every spirit of succubus, Every spirit that has been sent, every ancestral spirit, every spirit from the family bloodline that has determined that the women in this family, the men in this family will not be able to sustain healthy marriages. We break your hold over this marriage today in the name of Jesus. We destroy and, and uproot every evil altar that has been servicing the spirits of anti-marriage and divorce, the spirits of separation, the spirits of confusion, delusion, miscommunication, and misunderstanding. I cast you at the root right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to dry up, to wither up and die. I destroy every evil altar and I destroy every high priest and every high priestess servicing these altars to ensure that confusion reigns in this marriage. I curse you today and I command the reign of the judgment of God to reign on you and to destroy your evil works, to strip you of your power now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of Ahab that has been rampant in this marriage, that is threatening to run this marriage to the ground. Every spirit of Jezebel that has been working its witchcraft in this marriage to manipulate and to control the husband, to manipulate and to control the children. I break your hold now over this marriage under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Where the hearts of men have been turned cold and the hearts of women have been turned callous. Today, I destroy the shell, whatever calcified heart there is that is making it difficult for this marriage to work. I destroy that right now in Jesus' name. And I command there to be a transformation of the heart, a loosening of the calcification, that every heart of stone be turned into a heart of flesh, a heart that is pliable that is amenable to instruction, that is amenable to positive criticism, that is amenable to change. Lord, open up the eyes of your children that they might see the damage that their actions are causing to the marriage, that they might see the actions, the damage that their actions are causing to the children in the marriage. Lord, every form of unhealthiness in this marriage I remove right now by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of confusion, every spirit of stagnation, every spirit of strife, 
I cast you to the root right now and I command you, I command you to leave this marriage now in the name of Jesus. May every seed of doubt that has been planted in the hearts of men towards their partner, every seed of doubt and suspicion planted in the hearts of women towards their husbands, may all those seeds be uprooted. May every spell that has been cast to turn away the heart of the husband from the wife or the, or the heart of the wife from the husband, I break those spells now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every evil work to be completely destroyed concerning this marriage. Where wickedness in form of sexual immorality has been introduced into this marriage and is infiltrating this marriage and causing it to buckle at the root, I cast out the spirit of infirmity. I bind and paralyze it and command it to distract right now in the name of Jesus. That every form of sexual immorality introduced into the marriage, even by the partners themselves, let it be removed completely. Lord, sanctify that marriage bed. Sanctify that marriage. Sanctify the hearts of the people in that marriage, O oh Lord. And begin to do a new thing in their lives. Transform them, Lord. Transform their minds. Let them be renewed in the spirit of their mind. And give them the strength and the motivation to fight for their marriage, O oh Lord. May they fight for their marriage. Where they might be weary, O oh Lord, renew their strength. For you say that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall run and not faint. So Lord, for those that have been praying for marriage restoration and they feel that they have reached the end of the rope because nothing is happening. Lord, I pray that your hand will begin to move and will begin to supernaturally change things in that marriage. And as you begin to move and change things in that marriage, Lord, I pray that you will give them the strength to endure, that you will give them the motivation to continue. And above all things, Lord, that you will give them the peace that passes all understanding. That they will be able to serve you with joy, that they will still look to the hills from whence cometh their help and understand that their help comes from you and only you alone. Lord, restore these marriages for the glory of your name. Restore these covenants that have been broken or, are, or are, are at risk of being broken, Lord. Begin to restore them now in the name of Jesus. Give them a sign today, Lord. A sign for reconciliation, O oh Lord. A sign for reparation, O oh Lord, that the, for the, that the marriages will begin to become repaired, O oh Lord. Give them a sign, O oh Lord. Open up the door for communication. Open up the door for reconciliation. Let the doors be open now in the mighty name of Jesus. For the glory of your name, my Lord. For the glory of your name, King Jesus. For the Lord hates divorce. He hates separation. So to all the foolish women out there who are con contemplating leaving their marriages for no good reason at all. For that, I pray that you give them wisdom. Open up their eyes, O oh Lord. I command that the veil be lifted from their eyes. I command that the scales be fall off of their eyes, that they might see the foolish thing that they're about to do and that you will rescue them from their own foolishness, O oh Lord, and help them to stay in their marriages. Give them the wisdom that is needed to enable them to build their homes to the specifications that you had in mind when you put this man and this woman together in marriage. In the same token, Lord, I pray for the foolish man that is about to throw away his marriage to a mistress out there, that is about to throw away his marriage by listening to the words and the lies of the enemy in his head. Lord, I pray that you will reconcile him fast to you Reconcile him back to you first, O oh Lord, and then to his wife. Because if he's not reconciled to you, he will lack the requisite wisdom needed to be the high priest in his home. 
Lord, where he's been fooling around, I pray that you will convict him. Holy Spirit, begin to convict every wayward man, Lord. Convict his heart, Lord. Lead him to repentance and lead him back to his wife. That he may ask for forgiveness. And that as he asks for forgiveness, Lord, I pray that you will give her the grace to forgive and that you will reconcile their hearts together as one. For your word says that a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. And where there have been problems cleaving in these marriages, Lord, I pray that you begin to restore and repair the walls, repair the boundaries within these marriages, that honor, love, and respect might be restored in these marriages that mutual love, respect, freedom, and understanding might be what marks and characterizes these marriages, O oh Lord. That in joint love for you, my master, will reign. That even as they seek you intensely, O oh Lord, that as they seek you and as they find you, you will knit their hearts together as one again, O oh Lord. I sanctify the marriages under the sound of my voice. I command a building of the walls around these marriages to protect these marriages. I put a dome of protection over these marriages and their children, O oh Lord. And everything that was created, that thrived in this marriage, Lord, may continue to thrive. May you water these marriages, O oh Lord, and cause them to thrive. Even when they are in the desert of their time, Lord, water them, Lord. Let them drink of the living waters, O oh Lord. And in these living waters, may they find joy. May they find joy. May they find love. May they find peace. May they find happiness, O oh Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your word today. I thank you, Lord, that it is being done even as we speak. From our bellies, Lord, rivers of living water shall flow. May we drink of these rivers of living water. May these marriages be watered by these rivers of living water that know no end. All for the glory of your name. We thank you, Lord, that these marriages are being restored now. We thank you, Lord, that even as it is being done, your name is being glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. That's it for now, Lord. That's it for now, guys. Pray this prayer as many times as you can. Please share with as many people as you can that you know are going through marital stress. Let them know that there is hope for them yet and that the Lord, who is a covenant-keeping God, will do what he says he has done concerning this marriage. I'd also like to invite you to join us every Friday as we have a prayer uh, prayer line called The Upper Room, and we pray every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States, which is uh, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. That would be California time in the United States. Please join us if you'd like to see what we have been praying over in the last 27 weeks. All you have to do is click the live tab down below and check out what we have been praying over. We'd like to welcome you to our prayer family and hope to see you there as regulars on a more consistent basis. For the Bible tells us that men ought always to pray and not faint. So if you're not praying, you're fainting. But prayer is what sustains us and it's what sustains our relationship with God as well. I love you guys. God bless you, and I am grateful that the Lord is beginning to restore your marriage even now. So when the enemy comes against your marriage and tells you it's a hopeless case, you have to counteract that negative thought, that negative lie that is being planted in your mind with the word of the Lord. Matthew 16, 9, for what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Malachi 2, 14, do not forsake the wife of your youth. Proverbs 14 says, a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. So search the scriptures. Find what the scripture says about marriage. And every time things seem to be going worse, all you have to do is repeat the scriptures until they become a part of you. Say them out loud. 
when your thoughts seem to be driving you crazy and there seems to be no hope. For our God is a wonder-working God and he will do what he has said he has done. I love you guys and I hope to see you soon. That's it. This wraps up the Life is Spiritual series and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.